The first entry of this year's slate of Marvel Cinematic Universe titles begins with the third installment of Ant-Man. Paul Rudd is back, along with Evangeline Lilly, who plays the Wasp. Together with her parents, this family-based team of scientists finds themselves stranded in the quantum realm, being hunted by a very powerful and tech-savvy supervillain who will do anything to escape. It's Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantum Mania. I'm Ronald Young Jr., and I'm leaving the theater. This is Ronald, and I am leaving the theater after seeing Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantum Mania. Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantum Mania, directed by Peyton Reed, written by Jeff Loveness, starring Paul Rudd, Evangeline Lilly, Jonathan Majors, Michelle Pfeiffer, Michael Douglas, and Catherine Newton. For a complete cast listing, as always, check out the link in our show notes. So it's just me today, and I'm chit-chatting about the latest Marvel film. Uh, this is officially the beginning of what they're calling Phase 5. Phase 5 meaning the fifth phase of the... For those that have been paying attention, I mean, like, they're grouping all the movies and shows into different phases. Uh, and actually, this is for those who have not been paying attention. I don't know why I said that. But uh, they're grouping all of the movies into these phases that kind of indicate who the biggest bad is, what's kind of happening in each phase, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So this is the beginning of the fifth phase. And the fourth phase being basically everything that came after Avengers Endgame, Shang-Chi, The Eternals, Miss Marvel, She-Hulk, all of those. Those were all part of phase four. Now, a lot of those were introducing characters and setting up pieces that I think are going to become applicable in phase five, but this is actually the beginning of kind of the storytelling. And in this film, we're introduced to the big bad of phase five, who is Kang the Conqueror. Of course, this is the third movie in the Ant-Man trilogy. And this is where it kind of gets confusing when you deal with Marvel, because you're, you're at this point, you're kind of dealing with not just like, films and shows you're dealing with like a third trilogy of a show of a character that got introduced on this film you know what i mean like it's it just gets very complicated at some point and i look at this movie as not only the kickoff of something new so it's the first movie of phase five but it's also the third movie of the ant-man trilogy so for me walking into this i think you know after leaving other sequels where we had uh black panther 2 uh wakanda forever and we also had uh Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, you know, there's some building that they have to do that's kind of isolated to the characters, as well as it's going to build out whatever the next phase of the larger uh, scale of Marvel. So it gets like a little bit, uh, in terms of writing, it just gets, it's a feat. I want everybody to know it's not easy to do that. Now, with all of that being said, this is probably my favorite post in game Marvel film. I think they did a very good job here. And I think the reason why I liked it have to do with the facts that it feels like they're finally advancing the plot forward again. Uh, I am a person who from time to time just goes back and watches a Marvel movie as I have the appetite for it. I watch a lot of phase one, two, and three, obviously. Uh, phase four had a lot of films that I have no desire to watch again. Films and shows that I probably will never watch again. Uh, with the exception of what if, Loki, there's just stuff where you see them actually pushing the plot forward and it just feels like easier and more fun to watch a lot of that stuff in a way that it just feels like it not hasn't necessarily uh, in phase four. So with that being said, Ant-Man and the Wasp, the whole plot of this one is that they get stuck in the quantum zone or they get sucked into the quantum zone and down there they discover Kang the Conqueror. And now I really can't say much more about the plot without ruining the movie, but I'm gonna tell y'all all the things I liked about this. One, it is that uh, they are in introducing a compelling villain 
who is going to last beyond this movie. Uh, and that's not a spoiler if you watched Loki. So uh, I apologize to everyone who has not watched Loki. And I would encourage everyone to watch Loki before, if you have time, rewatch Loki before you watch Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. So I think watching these characters interact with each other was a, a lot of fun. You know, you have Michelle Pfeiffer as as uh, Janet Van Dyne. You have Evangeline Lilly coming back as the Wasp, aka Hope Van Dyne. You have Michael Douglas, who is Hank Pym, you know. And I think like a lot of this movie begins with the interactions of all of them because even Cassie, Scott's daughter, is involved in a major way. Initially, when I was watching the family interact, I remember being irritated by the way that Cassie was interacting with Scott. And I realized that they're kind of just building out scaffolding for what kind of makes sense for their motivations in the movie itself. But as the plot kind of moves on, that goes to the background very quickly because they have a very irritating conversation early in the movie at the table. When I say early in the movie, I mean within the first five to seven minutes of this film, they have this conversation in which Cassie kind of says to Scott, like, what do you even do? You don't do anything anymore. Like, and he's like, I saved the world. And she was like, yeah, but what do you do now? You're just out here signing books and hanging out. And I'm, I think my response to that would be like, yo, if I saved the world and snapped all three all around this table out of dust back into existence, then I think I, I mean, I think I deserve a little shot. If I want to take a break, I'm gonna take a break. Like, what are y'all talking about? And that was like, it felt very, <laughs> especially because it was the same, it's the same trope that I hate in most movies. Anybody who watches movies with me know I hate tropes in which kids are being quasi disrespectful to their parents and this kind of fell along those lines in kind of like a larger way so it was irritating but then as the movie goes on I mean the action is good we go down into the quantum realm and we see a lot of weird things that are just I mean they are a delight I mean it's 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 like if Star Wars were made right now and I know people are like well they do make Star Wars right now but I just mean like if you think about the minds and the technology and the stuff that they had then versus now there's like puppetry in this as well as a lot of CGI which if you don't like that you might not like some of these scenes but it just I don't know watching all of them kind of interact with one another and you know seeing the little cameos that do exist not necessarily cameos but it's it's extremely entertaining and it's a lot of fun this movie is fun in a way that I don't feel like a lot of the other Marvel movies have been fun you know like this movie felt like it's set up and did more with the multiverse than a movie with multiverse in its title, <laughs> you know? So, I, I mean, watching the way that they interact with the quantum realm, watching the way that it sets up for future interactions with multiverse uh, and with uh, possibly whoever the next villain may be, uh, <laughs> the way that it interacts with all of that just felt a lot more fun. And I think because you have Paul Rudd in it, uh, it, it just get, it, it lends itself to have more of this lightness. And then, I mean, of course, Paul Rudd is an accomplished actor, so it also lends itself to this bit of gravitas and seriousness when it's necessary. That being said, Jonathan Majors brings it in this film. I've never seen him in a role like this. Typically, he's playing stuff that is like a lot more serious, you know, uh, granted, and, and we've seen him in Lovecraft Country, so we've seen him interact with the supernatural, but in this one, it's a lot of like, you know, a lot more tech-based, if you will, but just watching him kind of you know, eat a little bit in this movie. Like, it's just like, yeah, y'all got a serious actor uh, for this role. Like, this guy, like, you know, he does this. This is like, this is what he does, uh, for lack of a better term. When I say that, I mean, the does, the this is the acting. What he does is acting. <laughs> So, but I mean, like, I, I really enjoyed watching it. When he was on screen, I was compelled. And the, the thing is, when you put an actor that we like in a role as a villain, it makes audiences kind of turn and look at them a little bit closer and take them just like a little bit more seriously, as opposed to somebody that we already hate, you know? And the thing is, we have to really hate them in order to like really buy into, uh, it, or like, I, when I say that we have to really hate them in order to like give them any sort of like, uh, latitude for being a villain and this one it doesn't necessarily have one of those uh villain arcs where it's like this guy's making a lot of sense nothing like that but because he's a compelling actor it makes it a lot of fun to watch uh so interacting with each other was a lot of fun michelle michelle pfeiffer has a huge role in this film and just reminded me of like why she has the stripes that she has like go back through michelle pfeiffer's catalog like you know she's not 
Like, she's no slouch, you know what I mean? So her showing up and having a chunk of this movie, I'm just like, yeah, no, bring her. Like, put her in more things. Like, I hope I see her in something that gets an Oscar next year. Uh, but yeah, all everybody kind of held up their end of the deal, and it was fun. And it was fun, and it felt like it had stakes to the larger bit of the Marvel Universe in a way that I think Marvel movies haven't had in quite a long time. Honestly, all of Phase 4. And I'm hoping that this movie is setting the tone for what, what, what we can expect from for what we can expect from the rest of uh, the phase, especially this year. I think we have the Marvels coming out this year. We have the new season of Loki coming out this year, Guardians of the Galaxy 3 coming out this year. So I'm hoping that all of those are like continuing to push the path forward in a way that I don't feel like phase four was necessarily doing. So I am very excited about uh, what the, you know, the remaining slate of Marvel movies look like for this year and beyond. I'm, it makes me tag back in. Of course, I'm going to watch everything Marvel, but at the same time, I need it to be good. So with all of that being said, I would give this movie a four of five stars. I would watch this again. I've already watched it twice. I enjoyed it. It's been one of the first Marvel movies uh, that I've seen in a while that I really wanted to go back and revisit it again and again and just kind of enjoy all the scenes, the, the funny parts, the fun parts, the action parts, all of that. I think this movie has a little bit of something for everyone in it, especially if you're already a Marvel fan. If you're a Marvel fan, this will be another good one <laughs> you can file away in the canon. If you're not, I think you'll still have a good time watching this. So yeah, check it out. And with that, Leaving the Theater is a production of Oh, It's Big Ron Studios. Thomas Tyra of Bias Studios mixes the show. Thank you, Tom. Show art from Heather Wilder. Theme music by the mysterious Breakmaster Cylinder. For more information about Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantum Mania, check out our show notes. You can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok at Oh, It's Big Ron. That's at O-H-I-T-S-B-I-G-R-O-N. You can find out more about this show and other Oh, It's Big Ron Studio shows by following us on Instagram at Oh, It's Big Ron Studios and on Twitter at Oh, It's Big Ron Stu. That's S-T-E-W. Leaving the theater will be back soon. Thanks for listening. Seeing the uh, other actors that kind of show up in this movie, it's it's extremely. All right, come on with the honking. Sheesh.